G'day, I'm Ted Jednak and I'm back in black. No need to adjust your screen. Uh, it's okay, everything's working well here. So, welcome to today's Triple T TV show, Ted's Tips on Tuesday. In today's Triple T TV show, you'll discover how to avoid the mayhem of treating Morton's neuromas. Yes, sometimes those feisty neuromas, they seem to have a mind of their own. And, you know, they don't always respond to our treatments as they should. I've certainly had my fair share of uh, Morton's mayhems, let me tell you. But the good news is, with 30 plus years of clinical experience, I've managed to work out some of the secrets to fixing neuromas. It's stuff I had no idea about when I'd completed my university training. You see, I've been utilizing manual therapies for, geez, over 22 years now. So I had a fair bit of experience. I've seen what works, what doesn't work, and I'm dead keen on shortcutting your path to even better clinical results with neuromas. Hey, if you've ever had a neuroma case not go to plan, then hit the sad face emoji and uh, we can commiserate together because I've certainly had that experience. But I've got a super extra special bonus for you today. Uh, and that is, I've roped in one of the world's leading experts on neuromas, David Cashley, podiatrist in Scotland, UK. Now, Scotland, is that still part of the UK or is that part of Scot Exit, Skexit? Uh, anyway, so he's based in Scotland. And Dave's knowledge and experience in assessing and treating Morton's neuromas effectively, look, it's second to none. So if you're a um, physio, chiro, podiatrist, uh, an osteopath, a physical therapist, and you're interested in fixing feet and fixing neuromas, then welcome, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me live from my hotel office uh, here in Melbourne, Victoria. Uh, it's fantastic to be reaching out to the global community of foot fixers. Uh, please say hi in the comments box below. Let me know where you're from. In last week's uh, Triple T TV show, it was all about foot pains and the neuroscience of relieving pains by focusing on what your patients love. Uh, the comments have been amazing and uh, show just how resourceful the foot fixing community is in helping their clients. Uh, I got a great um, comment from Karen Nasehi. I hope I pronounced that right, Karen. Uh, and I've got to tell you, your comments really warmed the cockles of my heart. Uh, she said, uh, Hi Ted, uh, love your show. Just thought I was being friendly and helping by encouraging my patients to do the things they enjoy. Some patients just seem to get stuck. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's great to know that there's some science behind it. I find it can work as a catalyst too. And this is a great point she makes here. Once they start being interested in one thing, they go on to find new interests too. Great to see people grow. Wonderful observation, Karen. Well done. I've had a few patients who are almost bereaved by their reduced mobility, and I haven't been able to help them. Now, I thought that was just such a wonderful description. It's like, yes, people can be so uh, impacted by what's affecting the things that they love to do. Bereavement uh, was such a great word. Uh, Karen goes on to say, then, uh, your freebie downloads look like just the thing I need. Thank you so much. Looking forward to next week's show. Regards, Karen. Karen, well, it's now next week, it's this week, which was you saw last week, but now we're forward in time or something like that. Anyway, uh, so I'm not doing any time travel, no Doctor Who reference there. Um, the freebie that Karen referred to, you can still grab a copy. Uh, it uh, lists the questions and actions that you can do and things that you can ask to help your patients feel better faster. Now make sure you got your copy from last week's show. It'll be uh, on this uh, um, Facebook page. It's the uh, go down, scroll down to the post of last week about uh, relieving pain in neuroscience. Um, one of the key, uh, I suppose, the key elements to helping patients feel better faster was to engage them with things or the things that they truly love. And speaking of truly love. Good friend and mate, Greg. 
Good to see you all the way from Canada. Thanks for joining us on this fine uh, winter's morning or summer's day for you. Um, so last week we talked about uh, the uh, helping people do the things that they truly love. Uh, and Dr. Lil and I, we practice what we preach. So here we are in central London doing the stuff we love to do. Uh, we've, oh, did I say London? <laughs> So, but that's where we're going to be next month. Uh, anyway, so here we are uh, in central like Melbourne. <laughs> it, actually, it is. It's reminded us a lot of London. Uh, and Greg, it, uh, you, this won't be any surprise uh, for you to hear about the things that we've uh, been doing uh, that we do truly love. We've wined and dined some of Melbourne's finest establishments. Uh, we've uh, supported the Mighty Crows come from a 50-point deficit. Um, Greg, that, that's a lot. You know, a typical game has 100 points. So, uh, in fact, uh, the final score was 103 points all. We were 50 points down in the third quarter. Uh, so we snatched a draw at the final kick, which was after the final siren. Uh, so that was uh, amazing to support the boys there. Uh, we've also supported the sunscreen industry because given the amazing winter sunshine that uh, Melbourne has put on for us, very untypical for Melbourne, let me tell you. Um, plus, we caught up with some leading health practitioners uh, that um, are health profession educators. And we've done that so that we can bring you top quality tips, tricks and strategies for you and your clients. You know, I've had the great privilege of learning from so many outstanding health practitioners from a diverse range of professions. What I'm going to talk to you about in uh, today's Triple T show is no exception. Now, while uh, Dave Cashley is a podiatrist, uh, his approach and skills are far from typical. In fact, we could say they're not typical of the region. Manuel, hola, that's our expression, isn't it? No, it's not typical of the region. Um, but I'll talk more about uh, Dave in a moment. In today's uh, show, it's all about the science behind neuromas and treating them with manual therapies. Uh, that's what we'll be investigating in today's Triple T TV show. Uh, we're looking at going beyond the standard university undergraduate training in order to get the clinical outcomes that your patients, your clients demand of you. You know, when I graduated from my university training, I did have some tools in my toolkit to treat neuromas. But I quickly discovered that I was missing some of the crucial pieces of the treatment puzzle. Have you ever felt like you didn't have all the answers that you needed for assessing and treating neuromas? If you have, give me a thumbs up or type in a yes in the comments box and just let me know if uh, we are sharing similar experiences. You see, as a health practitioner, you need to be equipped with the latest evidence-based tools to get the best possible outcomes from your service. Um, this is important to understand because uh, it has a significant bearing on today's topic, which is how to avoid Morton's mayhems and uh, avoid them with clear assessment and treatment steps for neuromas. Thank you for the thumbs up scrolling across the bottom of the screen there. Um, yeah, I know, I think it's a fair comment to say that we all experience uh, as practitioners certainly challenges with uh, some of our clients and some of our neuroma cases from time to time. It was in my quest to take my knowledge, uh, my skills and my expertise to the next level that prompted me to reach out to Dave Cashley because, look, he, well, he, he is the go-to guy when it comes to neuromas. If you know Dave or if you've met Dave, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't had the awesome pleasure of meeting Dave, well, you're in for a real treat. Uh, I'm, I'm actually physically catching up with Dave in London next month. See, there, there's the London connection. Uh, Dave's actually organised a meeting with a group of manual therapists, and this is to establish a framework of uh, training, uh, CPD, uh, education, uh, protocols, uh, standards for manual therapies in podiatry. See, Dave is a shaker and mover when it comes to working to further our profession. Uh, it's always fabulous to connect with dedicated health practitioners like Dave, who are so generous in sharing their expertise. Okay, so in today's uh, Triple T TV show, we're going to discover, one, the clinical tests for neuromas, 
that are more accurate than diagnostic imaging. And I'm also going to include the research that supports that claim, because it's a pretty radical claim, huh? Uh, we're also going to cover why neuromas are not related to the pronated foot pattern. Uh, we're also going to cover how someone with big, clumsy rugby hands developed excellent tactile skills. Uh, and the, the, that's a self-claim by Dave. Uh, he's the one who claims he has big, clumsy rugby hands. When I see him, I think he is an artist at work. So, um, but I'm just quoting Dave there. Uh, and then also we'll look at the exciting research that compares neuroma treatments with high-velocity manipulations and cortisone injections. And the results of that are staggering, to say the least. So, great stuff, huh? Let's jump in, shall we? Oh! Actually, I just remembered, we were here in, Mum, uh, in Melbourne uh, for the uh, Australasian Podiatry Conference just a couple of months ago. There was a researcher, uh, Barry Matthews, presented a paper on the evidence that concluded that manual therapies treatments for neuromas should be the first, the number one treatment option to undertake. So um, the paper was uh, evidence-based non-surgical treatment options for Morton's neuroma. So very topical for our, our show today. Look, it's the, what we can see is that there continues to be a growing base of evidence supporting the use of manual therapies for fixing feet. So we need to pay attention to that. So first, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's make sure that we uh, define what we are talking about when we say Morton's neuromas. Use this definition. Firstly, Morton's neuroma is a mechanically induced neuropathy that typically forms in the intermetatarsal spaces of the forefoot. Now, clinical tests are usually sufficient to confirm the diagnosis. Hear that? Clinical tests confirm the diagnosis. In fact, the research by Pastidis concluded that the clinical assessment of neuromas had a sensitivity rating of 98%. And yet, ultrasound and MRI assessments had sensitivities of 90 and 88%, respectively. See? Our hands, they are good for assessments. But just to wait till you hear what they can do for the actual treatments. Tell me, what are your typical clinical tests that you use for assessing forefoot pains or yeah, assessing forefoot pains for Morton's neuromas? If you want to type them in, that would be great. I'd be happy to uh, see what uh, your tests were. I'm just thinking back on my university training. I learned about Mulder's clicks. But given that Mulder was a key character in the X-Files around that time, I was a bit confused and I wasn't really sure or confident on how the tests actually worked. I wanted to believe. Oh geez, I'm being infected by a molder right there, aren't I? Anyway, so the reality was, I don't actually remember too many neuroma cases in my undergraduate uh, clinic. In fact, I don't remember any. That might be uh, a reference though to the quality of my memory. Um, but I think that explains why my, I had such poor skill levels in assessing and treating neuromas. I can remember the anatomy of neuromas, uh, you know, the anatomy, the, the nerve bundle being wrapped in the uh, myelin sheath uh, and uh, with the Schwann cells and, and it was the inflammation of the sheath and not the nerve that was the problem. Uh, and I remember um, early days in my clinic, I would draw pictures uh, for my clients and it would look like this where I draw the nerve inside and then the layers of uh, sheath, the myelin uh, sheath around there and explain to them it was like uh, layers of insulation tape wrapped around. And then when you got the swelling of the sheath, what would end up happening is that would compress on the nerve and lead to the mechanical induced uh, um, neuropathy that was occurring that led to the symptoms that our clients are feeling. So this is, you know, the idea of the mechanically... Sorry, just going back. So the idea of mechanically 
separating you know, if my fists are the, the metatarsal heads uh, uh, that are pushing in on the nerve to separate them that kind of made logical sense if that was the the cause of uh, the symptoms that our clients were feeling now since those early days I know there have been some arguments about what really does cause neuromas and that's one of the things I'm going to you know one of my goals for clarifying in today's show I want to clarify the cause or causes of neuromas uh, and I'll even give you an idea that changed my whole perspective on neuromas that I, I kind of stumbled on by accident. Then we'll get into the clinical tests and treatment options for you too. So as we've already clarified, neuromas are mechanically induced to neuropathies. But let me ask you this, which intermetatarsal space is the most common site for neuromas to form? Just type in your answer. Intermetatarsal space, we've got four of them. So pick one, first, second, third, or fourth. Let me know which in your clinical experience, uh, which intermetatarsal space is the most common site for neuromas to form. Okay, yes, I see we've got the, the in between the third and fourth metatarsal, yes, so the third intermetatarsal space. Okay, so we know the site, and but do we know that? Well, Parker, welcome. Thank you. Yes, third, you get uh, you win the prize today as well. Thank you. Um, all right, so we know the site, but do we know why that specific site? I never did. I just knew that that's where apparently it happens most uh, frequently. What uh, when I revisited the columnar theory of foot function? things started to make some sense. So back in the day, a bloke by the name of Leonardo da Vinci, he came up uh, with the idea of the foot being uh, structured in, uh, he called them literally two feet. So what we had was uh, he divided the foot uh, structure and on the medial side, uh, the medial column, as it's commonly referred to, or the lateral column, the medial side he called the piedi dinamica, or the dynamic foot. The lateral column uh, was referred to uh, by da Vinci as piedi statico, so the static foot. And uh, I think I heard about it, might have heard about it in university, but uh, I had the great uh, fortune to um, do a placement, uh, almost like an internship with Jim Ganley uh, in 1989. So he's based in uh, uh, Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, in the US. And uh, so we did some work in his clinic and also at uh, the Philadelphia College of Podiatric Medicine. And um, Jim referred to the columnar theory of foot function. And it kind of tweaked uh, in my mind, um, but it didn't go any further. I didn't really understand uh, what the relevance was. Uh, it was a few years later when I did uh, some training with uh, Harvey Lampel in foot mobilization uh, therapies. And he talked about the medial column, lateral column. And the way um, Harvey described it was it was that the medial column sat on top of the lateral column, uh, and it was the, the medial column that did the dynamic adapting to the earth, and the lateral column kind of was the, the stable base or the foundation. Uh, and so in line with uh, da Vinci's uh, Piedi Dinamico and Piedi Statico. Um, and then I think, uh, I thought, oh, that's right, uh, Jim Ganley talked about this, and maybe there's, there's something here I'm missing out on. When I learned to the foot mobilization therapies, and uh, Harvey was describing this difference or this uh, function between the two uh, columns of the foot, and then when I realized, well, hang on a second, we've got the intermetatarsal space, the third intermetatarsal space, which is the most common site for neuromas. Maybe there's something mechanically going on between these two columns that's contributing to the neuromas. So that was just kind of the, the process in my thinking. Uh, then when I started applying that principle in practice, it started making a difference to my clinical outcomes. It was a few years later, I was uh, doing a, a training at um, QUT. Uh, so this is the Queensland University of Technology Podiatry School uh, in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, one of the participants was one of the staff members, uh, Steve Ari. Now, Steve has a PhD in uh, structural engineering, as well as uh, in um, being a, a podiatrist and one of the lecturers there. And so I was talking about this, uh, the, the, medial bank, uh, sorry, the medial columns, uh, lateral columns, and, and how they may be affecting, uh, if there's dysfunction between the two, could be affecting the connective tissues and neurovascular bundle in between the two columns. And he, uh, after the session, he pulled me over to one side. He said, Ted, um, 
Look, the way you describe uh, what, what's uh, going on between the columns uh, is certainly very interesting, but from an engineering point of view, you're not actually describing how columns function. What you're describing is how beams function. See, in, in pure engineering and architectural terms, columns are vertical structures and beams are horizontal structures. And when we look at the foot, these the columns are actually functioning as beams in horizontal structures. So some of you may be familiar, or if you've heard me refer to this in the past, is that I refer to the beam principle of foot function. So we've actually got the beams that work side by side, medial beams sitting almost slightly on top of uh, the lateral beam, but they're mechanically they function as beams. And the principle, I suppose the therapeutic principle that I took from this was if we've got the two beams and we've got uh, uh, some displacement between these two beams, the connective tissue irritation between the beams might be a reason why uh, we get uh, the neurons forming in between the third and fourth metatarsals. Uh, I can remember this client, Leanne, who um, she was a, a corporate businesswoman, and this is pretty soon after I did my training with Harvey. Uh, and I thought, well, okay, maybe we need to do some mobilization therapy here uh, and release some of the restrictions between these two beams. Uh, so um, Leanne comes in. Uh, I explained actually the ideal thing for her would have been to have some good orthotic control, uh, maybe some met domes. Um, but she flat out refused because being a corporate woman, uh, she needed uh, court shoes, slip on footwear. Uh, there was no, uh, the orthotic device that she needed just wouldn't be accommodating those shoes. So I then had to think, oh, okay, well, what else can we do? And I thought, oh, I know. What I'll do is I'll release the connective tissue restrictions here between the third and fourth meds. Makes sense, doesn't it? Great. And you know what happened? Joy of joy, success? No, <laughs> I made the bloody thing worse. And I could not think of, holy moly, what have I done? This woman, she's put her trust in me. She's got, you know, being on her feet. She's in the shoes with a bit of a heel and I'm making the bloody thing worse. And then it dawned on me, because when I was doing the mobilization, it was actually causing an irritation. So I'm literally, she's got this uh, neurovascular irritation between the third and fourth metatarsals I'm mobilizing them and I'm actually grinding them against each other. And at first I'm going, well, you know, yeah, sure, it's going to be hurt a bit, but you know, suck it up uh, and you know, let's make this thing better. And it kept on getting worse. And then I remembered a uh, promotional uh, TV series that uh, took me back to my teenage years uh, for, it was the Playtex series of ads. Now, I don't know if uh, Playtex is a, a global brand, but it was actually a uh, bra making, a Brazil uh, making company, certainly in Australia, and they had this great uh, promotional um, series of ads where their, their tagline was to lift and separate. As a teenager, yeah, that's kind of stuck in my mind. And I thought, well, hang on, maybe I need to do a Playtex with my neuroma treatment and actually lift and separate those beams while I'm mobilizing and that made a world of difference for me so instead of just grinding the two beams against each other it was separate and then so, so put them under traction and then mobilize the tissues so you're not compounding or grinding into the actual uh, the two the, the bone elements that are pressing or irritating the neurovascular bundle that was a, an aha moment for me. That kind of made sense of, oh, all right. And clinically, that's what I started noticing as well, is now we're getting uh, better clinical results. So while that was a good start for me, Dave Cashling has some very refined and reproducible, reproducible assessment and treatment methods. Um, I mentioned, first thing, the clinical tests for neuromas that are more accurate than the diagnostic imaging. So the first test, now I apologize, I don't have a uh, foot skeleton with me, so I'll, I'll use my hand as an uh, example. The first test um, that Dave, uh, and it's a, I think it's a test that we may all be familiar with, is the squeeze test. So you literally squeeze across uh, the, uh, all of the med heads, and then while you're squeezing with one hand, okay, I'm not gonna be able to do this too well, with uh, your other hand, you grab the third and fourth metatarsals and uh, dorsiflex and plantar flex up and down. 
And if there's a neuro, neuro uh, a neuroma with uh, the swollen or irritated nerve sheaths there, then you get the molders click. So literally it'll click between the bones. It's also one of the most reliable ways to reproduce the symptoms. So if you squeeze and then move those um, third and fourth met heads or the site of the neuroma, even if it's a different intermetatarsal space, and reproduce uh, the click and with the associated symptoms, uh, that's, that's the diagnostic test that uh, is far better or is better than the ultrasound and MRIs. So that one, if that helps, great. The second test is a neural stretching test. Now, what the neural stretch test is, uh, this was completely new for me. You have your client seated uh, and the foot, uh, so the calf and the Achilles is resting on the examination table. What you do is you dorsiflex uh, the foot to end resistance and then you apply a dorsal dorsiflexion force on the third and fourth toes. And what you're actually doing is you're putting the whole neural pathway under traction tension. That is another clinical test that with an irritated neuroma will highlight, uh, you'll get the feedback there, both of uh, reproduction of the symptoms or it'll hurt uh, the client. They'll report neurological or neural type of sensitivities. The third clinical test that um, Dave also uses is the use of a force gauge. Now, they're pretty simple instruments and they uh, have a gauge uh, with a, a probe here and you push it into a point and it measures how much force you're applying. So what Dave would do is he'd apply uh, the, um, the measuring part of the gauge to the site of pain with the neuroma and then keep pushing until the symptoms started uh, coming on. And he would measure on the gauge at what point would the symptoms occur. Then uh, as his treatments would uh, continue forward, he would then keep testing and it would be, you know, have a baseline before he started any treatment and then keep measuring. And what he notes over a period of three weeks is that the amount of force required to elicit the same symptoms would continue to increase, meaning it would take more pressure to develop those symptoms. And it was a way for him to uh, quantify or actually measure the amount of force or what the tolerance level was for uh, that particular patient's neuroma. So this is a great way to uh, quantify the symptomatic progress of your clients and of your patients. The, um, in fact, I know that uh, Dave is um, in the, the, the process right now of finalizing uh, some of the, the tests and the documentation of uh, the study that he's doing. So I'm looking forward to, when that comes out, uh, I'll definitely let you know uh, how things um, pan out and uh, I know from my initial discussions with Dave is that uh, there was definitely some very uh, tangible measurable results in how because part of the what the treatment would be with Dave is he was using um, high velocity manipulation techniques to actually get uh, the changes happening with the neural irritations uh, and Craig, welcome. Good to have you on board here. I'm sure you're probably all over on top of uh, Dave Cashley's work, being the research guru um, that you are. Okay, so uh, there were a number of other elements that uh, Dave certainly um, uh, highlighted uh, brilliantly and articulately in, uh, in an interview that I did with him recently, and that is why neuromas are not related to the pronated foot pattern. Uh, and also how even someone with um, good solid hand uh, anatomy, he could develop excellent tactile and manual therapy treatment skills. Uh, and uh, some of the great research uh, that uh, Dave's also involved with, which is comparing neuroma treatment results of high velocity manipulation techniques with cortisone injection. So doing some uh, very interesting stuff on what are the most effective ways, particularly from a conservative perspective, uh, meaning non-surgical. I'm not sure if we call uh, cortisone injections as a conservative measure, but what uh, I've got uh, lined up for you today is that you can discover all of these elements from the man himself. In fact, today's freebie has the link, the link of my interview with Dave, where he describes the assessments, the treatments, and the research uh, that he's undertaking. So Ted's takeaway tip for you today is consider the beam principle of foot function when 
you are assessing and treating your next neuroma case. Or if you've got a current case that hasn't fully resolved yet, then consider, is there a um, problem, mechanically induced neuropathy that's resulting from the beams and the way they're working together? Uh, I know I've uh, postulated the idea that, uh, the, that on the medial beam, the talus can shift anteriorly, and that leads to this domino effect of into the navicular cuneiforms and first, second, third uh, rays, creating some irritation between uh, the connective tissues and neurovascular bundles in between the medial and lateral beams. Um, that certainly uh, come under question, and I think that's uh, certainly very valid. Um, the other theory or the principle biomechanically is where if we've got that um, pronatory compensation of the subtalar joint and mid-tarsal joint, we get the talus shifting anterior and anteromedially. Whether it's actually a displacement of the talus or it's the beams shifting against each other, I think the principle or the, uh, the biomechanical compensation is still, still applies where you get the beams shifting against each other, setting up the circumstances so that there can be irritation between uh, the connective tissues between those two beams. Um, so that's uh, probably, if there's only one thing you get from uh, today's show, that would be the thing I'd recommend uh, you take away and apply in your clinical uh, considerations, your clinical reasoning. Now, the key thing, uh, also for the practical takeaway point uh, that I would recommend you do, is the mobilization technique. Make sure you do the Playtex method, and that is to lift and separate those beams before you start mobilizing them against each other. You can also teach your clients how to do this as a home exercise. Now, it does depend on how flexible they are and if they can reach down to their own feet to be able to do that mobilization work. But I've certainly found that beneficial in conjunction with uh, any uh, met domes that you may be applying or any orthotic control to control some of the biomechanical compensation uh, as well. Um, another useful tip that has also certainly had a good uh, clinical result with us is a golf ball massage. Now, this is uh, done in a seated position. So your client's sitting and just the weight of the leg uh, is, sits on top of the golf ball. And what you do is you actually get them to roll the golf ball directly along the intermetatarsal space line. So if it's typically between the third and fourth metatarsal, rolling the golf ball. So weight of the foot or as much as they can tolerate. So they, again, you get the separation of the uh, third and fourth rays so that we can open up and stretch out those connective tissue restrictions that may be contributing to the mechanically induced neuropathy uh, uh, at the neuroma site. So it would literally roll backwards and forwards over the golf ball and typically do that for 30 seconds, have a bit of a break, uh, 10 seconds or so, and then go again for another 30 seconds and repeat that you know, three times typically. Uh, the other thing, just to um, make it a more convenient thing to do on a day-by-day -day basis, if they're, you know, at the night watching uh, telly, um, sitting foot on the uh, floor over the golf ball, each ad break. A little bit tricky to do if you're watching the ABC, but uh, basically if you can do it periodically and get some of that opening up of those connective tissue restrictions, that can certainly be very beneficial. Okay, so if you've just joined us, uh, we've had a terrific show today. It's all been about how to assess and treat Morton's neuromas more confidently. We've discussed the biomechanical basis of the etiology of neuromas. Uh, we've looked at the evidence base for the value of clinical assessment of neuromas. Uh, we've also looked at the uh, evidence supporting manual therapies as a treatment option for neuromas. In fact, the first go-to treatment option. Uh, plus, we've looked at some useful, inexpensive force gauges that help us measure the treatment progress uh, of uh, our neuroma patients that we're working with. Uh, I've also referenced some brilliant work by Dave Cashley and uh, Barry Matthews on the role of manual therapies in treating neuromas. Um, then I gave you uh, Ted's tips on the treatment of neuromas. Whew, <laughs> what a show, jam-packed with practical good stuff, hey? 
Um, so, as with all Triple T TV shows, I'm going to give you a summary of Ted's tips so that you can download them and then have some additional resources to help you help more people like never before. Uh, today's uh, fabulous freebie is full of the headline topics, the clinical tests I mentioned, uh, the links to the suppliers of the force gauges. Plus, I've also included the link to the interview with Dave Cashley so you can hear all the good stuff straight from the horse's mouth. Just click the link that's going to be on this post. If you're watching live, it's going to be there in about five minutes' time. If you're watching a replay, it will be sitting above my head right up here in the, the link. Um, click on the link and it'll take you straight to the download page and uh, you can tell us where you need to get the download sent to and we'll send it to you uh, all gratis. So uh, that'll be already waiting for you. Um, any other questions that you've got, uh, please feel free to type them in. I'll be happy to uh, uh, address those for you as best I can. Uh, next week's show, though, let me just give you a bit of a heads up. We're going to be coming to you live from Perth, Western Australia. So we're going right across this big brown land of ours. Uh, we'll be running in Perth uh, our last sold-out FMT workshop in Australia. I uh, can't wait to train a dedicated group of health practitioners on how to fix more feet like never before. Uh, I'm so excited about next week's Facebook Live show because we're going to be doing a live interview with one of Australia's leading MSK radiologists. Uh, his name is Sam Cherian, and uh, there, are, there are times where I feel like Sam, he's my twin brother. I mean, his name, Sam, it's got three letters, just like Ted. We've got to be related. And when you see him, you might even notice the striking physical resemblance too. I think he's a very handsome, debonair man, if I do say so myself. Anyway, um, you, you won't want to miss next week's uh, Triple T TV show where you'll meet Sam. And as a leading MSK radiologist, Sam's going to uh, give you some of the behind-the-curtain scenes of radiology so you can better... I suppose, uh, get even better diagnostic imaging results for your clients. Uh, not to fa mention, sorry, not to, um, of course, uh, not mentioning the fabulous opportunity of meeting my double. Is he my double? I'll let you decide that next week. So thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, let me know what you thought of today's show. It's been a huge episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Has it been useful? Um, have there been practical tips that you can apply in your clinic? Let me know, I'd love to hear. Uh, if you haven't already liked this Facebook page, Foot Mobilization Techniques, then please do so. Uh, also, if you have a colleague that uh, you know they would love to get better client outcomes for neuroma cases, please share this post with them. Uh, and just as a reminder, the fabulous freebie that's uh, either above my head, yeah, it should be above my head uh, in a few moments' time, uh, or it's in the comments box below, um, make sure you grab your copy. Please make sure you join me and my brother from another mother, Sam, next Tuesday on Triple T TV. Uh, as my mate uh, Matt Wimmer from the Gold Coast says, if you want to stay ahead, catch up with Ted. No, I don't think his voice sounds like that, but uh, anyway, I just got uh, taken over by that. Uh, big uh, special thanks too to Dr Lil for all of her wonderful preparation and presentation and um, methods in keeping me under control. If you want to send a few uh, heart thanks uh, across for Lil's work, that would be much appreciated. Mine are coming live. Okay, looking forward to showing you my tips next week. Here they are. Oh, you couldn't see that. Lucky. Uh, it's been a blast chewing the fat, fat with you today. I hope you have had a cracking good time. Until next week, same bat time, except we're going to be in uh, Western Australia time. So that's uh, two hours behind Melbourne, the East Coast, one and a half hour. Late. You work it out. Um, until then, next Tuesday, take your skills to the next level and fix more neuromas like never before. Cheers. <laughs>